Welcome to anyone watching this short video. What it shows is a prototype ILS panel uh, for use with A10C Warthog. I have programmed a basic boot screen, uh, which is what you can see now, and it stays in that state until such time that it receives the data stream from DCS BIOS when you execute the SOCAT file. When that file's launched, the data starts to stream through to the Adreno and quite instantly the ILS readout is displayed. The power light that you can see is something I've added and it represents the, the one main departure I've made from the panel within the simulator. So rather than an outer dial um, to the frequency adjuster, which would click either way for power on and off. I've simply got one dial for the frequency with a push button within it and a visual cue to show the status. The panel can control all of the, the main aspects of the ILS panel, but obviously within the simulator itself, if you were to click things within the simulator, you can also see that that is reflected and updated on the output to the panel. And that's something that I've shown here for the power on off and the megahertz adjuster as well as the kilohertz adjuster. This is a, an early prototype of the panel which is just the preparation uh, for when I build the bigger sim pit later in the year. For anyone interested in perhaps building a panel like this I've added on now about another 15 minutes uh, of material which just sort of outlines uh, the key steps I went through for the construction. I use Cut2D, the software package by Vectric, in order to produce my CAD CAM file. And I'd set out initially to produce the auxiliary lighting panel, which was a nice next step from the fuel panel I did recently, which I've also uploaded on onto YouTube and the size of the acrylic I had for this panel was bigger than that needed and I was able to use the offcut um, that would have been left from the auxiliary light panel to also produce the ILS panel. So I import a bitmap um, into Cut2D of the, the two panels that I'm going to produce and in this case it's the auxiliary lighting panel as well as the ILS panel. And then to trace over that image um, any lines that I would want to engrave onto the uh, spray painted acrylic. And then when I take the bitmap away, away you can see that. I then add the text. And in doing this again, um, I'm able to have the alignment how I would want it. So with some of these, um, a10 panels, sometimes the writing and the uh, mounted switches are a little bit cramped to the right, so I'm able to spread a little bit more evenly to sort of to the center that the datum of, of the panel. Based on the size of the components I'll be mounting, which in this case are uh, a mixture of toggles, uh, dials, which will be via rotary switches and also uh, rotary encoders as well as uh, seven segment displays I'm able to to mark where exactly they'll be in, in such a way that they will fit nicely and won't interfere with each other behind the panel. As well as behind the panel I also consider the front of the panel and trace over the diameter of the uh, dial heads just to be sure that the text and lines are well positioned in relation to them. There's also the added consideration here that uh, I want a LED mounted to indicate the status of the power to the panel.
even though the ILS panel is a lot smaller in size than the auxiliary light panel, it's amazing how much extra time went into that one due to the fact that there's the seven segment display which is on a PCB which needs to be mounted behind and and done in such a way that it fits nice and flush although it will need just a, a touch of wiggle room. I now produce the tool pass and then I can preview them to get a good idea of how they're going to look when they're cut on the uh, CNC machine. The preview function within Cut2D is really helpful to be sure that the the look will be exactly what you are trying to achieve. When it finishes producing the uh, the final images you can obviously click and remove any waste material and then have a bit of a closer look to see um, see exactly what it will look like. The ILS panel is one of those ones that really is quite a small panel relative to just exactly how much is going on. There's a lot going on there and it's a really helpful panel to have and one that uh, you can use pretty much every time you fly. With that bit of freedom to spread out your, your text as you want you almost feel that you can make a, a bit of an improvement over the, the actual panel within the simulator within the aircraft. We now take the uh, piece of prepared acrylic and cut it on the CNC machine. I begin by engraving all the lines and markings onto the panel. I then engrave all of the text onto the panel. And what we're doing here is we're literally just taking a, the paint off the surface. And the final step is to now um, cut the holes within which all of the various toggles and switches will be mounted. And you can see it's now just starting the cut for the uh, rectangular mounting hole ready for the uh, seven segment display. And the panel can now be divided into two, so which will have the one separate fascia for the ILS panel and the other fascia for the auxiliary lighting panel. It's always good just to give it a once over and just check that the engraving of the text came out really clear and that uh, no paint was chipped and then we're ready to have a look at uh, mounting all the components. As you can see it's an opal acrylic, it's 3mm thick and with the paint that's been shaved away that will allow the light transmission uh, from the back lighting. What I've got here are some uh, see-through pieces of acrylic which I've cut just with a, a Stanley knife and I'm going to use those to uh, mount some of the uh, rotary encoders behind the, the panel. Now what we have here is a lineup of all of the key components that are going to be mounted into the fascia. We have a rotary encoder. Um, this one has a push button in the centre and a, a mounting cap as you can see. There's a LED which is in a bezel and that will be for the power on off. We've got the 7 segment display on a PCB. The panel itself. And then this is a dual concentric rotary encoder, a really, really nice piece of kit, um, which has a dial within a dial, and that will be used to control the volume on the inner uh, dial, and on the outer one it will control the frequency in kilohertz. 
Now the reason for using a rotary encoder rather than a rotary switch was more that whereas it's just a dial with a set number of positions that on the ILS panel they're dials within dials and obviously the rotary encoders you can get those where like this one now it's dual concentric um, which allows you to more closely replicate the actual panel. Now this is the first time I've used rotary encoder and it is quite different in that it gives out a series of pulses that go through a pattern of um, say if it controlled two different lights one might be on and the other's off and then the next one it would be the other way and then they're both off and both on and what you tend to find is that the software that is looking at these pulses needs to see a number of them in order to understand whether you're rotating it clockwise or counterclockwise and for that reason you do tend to have a delay from when you rotate it to when it it recognises that within the simulator and that's the case whether I've uh, tried it via the DCS BIOS or the keyboard encoder it just seems like whichever method you use it to read that input there is a delay and on the, the beginning of this video you could see what you could see represented the best of how it works there are actually quite a few times that you rotate it and it, it will get you to rotate it several times before it will update um, and then sometimes after rotating it a lot to update you might then rotate it any few clicks and it might suddenly skip ahead a couple so I think on reflection after using rotary encoders uh, I would always be really keen to actually use a rotary switch uh, in future just for it being precise it's just a case of then looking at ways to have uh, push buttons within those so we're now going to mount the uh, the backlighting so it's a simple LED strip of one colour which in this case is green so it's in keeping with the A10C I will solder a couple of wires to the end here and then I'll attach an adapter which will let me power it from the mains it's important to just take a moment to uh, recognise the work that Yarn uh, on the ED forums known as uh, FSFE and has done in producing DCS BIOS it's an absolutely fantastic uh, piece of software that he's developed and in terms of if you like the barriers of entry for people getting into Simpit building it really makes that difficulty level scalable initially you'll be looking at um, the basic parts of his control reference uh, documentation and, and the details and how you use it and then you'll find that gradually you, you progress into the developer's guide and the advanced menus and um, it really lets you get into it easily but also progress. If you look on the ED forums you'll see some links for pictures of work that has been done by a John Wall um, also known as Warhog and the quality of the work is really good and it, it's really good to look at and it's something to aspire to so I definitely suggest if you're going to build something that you do have a look at that and check it out. This was a really nice panel to build. In terms of the outputs and inputs, uh, DCS BIOS was for the uh, ILS frequencies and the power LED for on and off and the volume dial and then a, a keyboard encoder was used for the outer left and right dials for controlling the megahertz and kilohertz. The initial thinking um, in terms of using DCS bias for one of the part of a rotary encoder and a keyboard encoder for the other was then I can see in the usage of this panel whether um, there are any any advantages to one over the other. The outputs from the panel for use with the keyboard encoder um, have an RJ45 socket at the end of them and there's an output from the keyboard encoder enclosure which also has a RJ45 socket and then the two of those sockets are connected just with a standard Ethernet cable that's what then connects the panel to the uh, keyboard encoder the Adreno is connected directly to the computer via USB which not just powers it, it streams the data to it well ultimately 
it will be one of many panels and therefore I've installed a number of wires here you can see ready to support um, the use of a an RS-485 network so this will be a slave and it will link into a, an Adreno Mega as a master. There will be some uh, rework needed with this panel most likely uh, a change of the colour of the seven segment displays to a green so that's more in keeping with the, the A10C but it really has been a, a real pleasure to build this and a, a real joy to use um, in flight and I hope you gained some value from this video and thanks for watching